Welcome back to WMMBAM.com, our video on demand section. We are taking a bonus eight or ten minutes after the show to talk to our candidates after we've had the interview on the radio program. We're letting the candidates interview each other. Today, School Board District 4 candidates, Carrie Lewis and Karen Henderson. Karen has the job now, has had it for the last four years. Carrie says, I want the job, and we're going to let them talk to each other about what's going on here. We will start with our challenger. Carrie, what's your first question for Karen Henderson? Uh, let's see. Um, explain why a student doesn't have a right to attend the grade appropriate um, school closest to where they live. They don't have a right? Right. They do have a right. Okay, because um, I know you voted in the past to send kids past the school closest to them. <laughs> Not me. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> unless, of course, you know. Let's talk about what the actual <laughs> practice is, just to get the question in uh, yeah. focus a little bit. We do have kids that are passing one school to go to another. Is that correct? We had a whole bunch of that going on mm -hmm. prior to the redistricting. Now, some of that may still happen mm -hmm. because you only have so much room in the schools. It, it's not because we prefer to do that. You have to get the kids in there. And the, there are areas of Melbourne that pass on leaf to go to Sherwood. That is true. But I can't take that whole neighborhood because it's got 100 kids in it and put it in a school that's already filled. So that just, it's <laughs> not possible. All right. Okay. Let me, uh, Karen. Your first question for Karen. Um, geez, I need my glasses on. You want um, mine? I've got them. <laughs> 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 this is a question about PICO dollars, public education capital outlay, uh, which is appropriated at the end of each legislative session. Um, and you may have heard us speaking about this in the past if you've been watching the board meetings. Mm -hmm. Please explain the difference between these allocations for public versus charter school and whether you agree with them. Okay, Carrie, uh, the idea of how those charter schools and public schools are funded. Give us your thoughts. Hang on here. <laughs> A lot of stuff to go through, we know. I know. Let's see if I even have it. I think I brought it. Do you know what the current allocation is? I don't think I brought it with me. Well, I'll tell you. The current allocation is zero for public schools and 100% for charter schools. Do you think that's appropriate? Realize you don't have the uh, information in front of you, but yeah, on a, on a base philosophy basis, don't worry about it. Let, let's just get to the heart of the question. Those dollars being generated right to charter schools now, no, no dollars going to, to the general public schools is it right for those funding those dollars to be funded in that direction, or would you prefer to see it done in another manner? I'll, I'll have to look into that. I'm sorry. All right. Very good. Let's get into your next question for Karen then. Okay. Well, shoot. Now i got to try to find that again. <laughs> yeah, we keep burying the paper. <laughs> um, why, despite declining enrollment and combined revenues of approximately $660 million per year for the last three years, did you vote to raise property taxes? Okay. We don't. We, in, a couple years ago, we were given the option and encouraged by the state legislator to levy the quarter mill on the operating side. That's when they had taken away lots of funding during, after the fourth calculation, we had lost, you know, millions and millions of dollars. Basically, they say, here's your, your pot of money. And then after the second calculation, everything was fine. They came to the third calculation, they started taking money back. So you have your budget in place and they start removing it. So at the end of the year, you have no money. Then we had the housing decline, and they took more money from education. So they said, well, we're not going to do anything to raise taxes, but I'll tell you what, you local school board can do it. Now, I voted for the quarter mill because I felt that we were had already been making cuts, and it would give us an opportunity to catch our breath and really make good assessments rather than just doing a hatchet job to our education to educating our children, um, I, you know, which I think is an important process to take. We were only allowed to do that one time. Then we took it to the voters and asked them, just like we're going to do in November if, if we vote for that, uh, and let the voters decide, do you want to allow us to continue the quarter mill or not? And the public said, yes, please do. So th that's 
Okay, that almost sounds like a thank you, sir. May I have another? Uh, no. <laughs> No, no, but, you know, the quarter mill is going away, and again, I think it's up to the voters. And if the voters say no, and Bill, you'll certainly go vote and vote no, and my yeah, opponent much. certainly <laughs> go, and that's fine. But then, you know, if I didn't put it out there, and then something happened, you would sit here and tell me at our next interview, doggone it, Karen, how come you didn't see this coming? Mm-hmm. So. You know, yeah, that's the cool thing about my job. That's the thing I like about my job. That's true. <laughs> All right, let's get your next question for Carrie, please. Um, a current hot topic that's going to be discussed in uh, September is uh, sibling preference, mm-hmm. uh, the pros and cons of sibling preference, and uh, what do you think about the choice schools and programs in our district? Well, I think that... Um, get that microphone in front of you so we can hear you, please. Okay. I know, the whole radio thing, it's, it's new, it's tough, yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but that's all right, we'll get you through it. Um, with the sibling preference, it's my understanding, um, If let's say you have two children, one is a junior or, yeah, junior at astronaut, and you have one that's going to be entering astronaut, is that when it's, all of a sudden it could be redistricted, and the younger child might not be able to go to No, this is astronaut. about choice schools. Choice, school, okay. choice schools. Never mind. I'll, g- I'll give you another one. How's that? Mm-hmm. Um, how school about school. elected versus appointed Department of Education or the uh, school state board of education? How do you feel about appointed or elected officials up there? For what? I'm sorry. Say it again. State board of education. Um, then do you think the current process is working? I'll have to get back with you on that. I'm still learning. I mean, I've only been doing this for a month. You've been doing this for four plus years. So, I mean, I know there's a lot that I need to catch up on, but I will do it. All right. Very good. Let me uh, let me close it off then with uh, one question. As we see kids who don't have opportunities that seem to exist just maybe eight or ten years ago, are we doing enough in Brevard as far as vocational education goes, or is there something we need to do in that direction that would be better than what we're doing right now? Karen, let's let's start with you. I think we have some really good programs. We have the, the hospital, hospitality programs, the culinary programs, um, some science and engineering programs. Uh, you know, I think that we're doing the best we can with what we've got right now. Uh, I'm sure that there could always be uh, improvement uh, working with our local companies to, to ensure that our companies get the kind of people that they need to work in their companies, whether it be plumbing or, um, you know, construction or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, you'd have to be able to fund those, mm-hmm. you know, and I just don't see in how. In my home county in West Virginia, mm-hmm. we've got one vocational center, and the, all the high yeah. schools feed into that center for the kids who are inclined to do the plumbing the carpentry the auto repair right th- and, and we've done things. that a little even some medical things now exactly yeah. and and you know, and we do that too we've got some dentistry programs uh but um you know so we we have things out there it's not a litany of lists uh, you know it's not a huge list but it's uh more than some have Okay, very good. Karen, yeah. what do you think about vocational education? What should we I, be doing and what are we doing? Well, there? I think that's definitely a step in the right direction. I know, you know, when I went to school, I wish that was, you know, readily available. Um, you know, that uh, there were a lot of things that I, you know, would have been interested in and, and learning more or, you know, um, educational choices I wish I could have made back then. That, right. and you know, I think they're more offering. important for these kids today yeah. b- mm-hmm. because the options there, as expensive as college is right. and, and as non-beneficial as it can be in some circumstances, kids can go make a great living turn on a wrench and yes. they just need to be able to do it. Ladies, thank you both for your time today. We're done on the video section this morning. We come back later with uh, more candidates, so keep coming back and checking here. Keyword video at WMMBAM.com. Thanks a lot.